Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to play with my new alcohol pearl inks. I'm going to create a lot of backgrounds and then I will show you how I turn them into cards. So here are the new alcohol pearl inks. There are 12 colors and they do have a pearlized mica inside and you will get a lovely shiny effect. Now you can uh, mix and match them with the other alcohol inks that you already have. You can put them in the same case. They have the exact same size as the old ones and they work together beautifully. But with the new ones you will get a lovely shimmer. You can also use the blending solution or the blending solution marker just like you did with the old inks. Now one thing that you need to remember is that all that mica, the pearlized mica, stays at the bottom. So you need to make sure that you shake them well before you use them just to make sure that all the goodies inside that jar are nicely mixed. And I'm going to play with my new alcohol pearls and I will create some backgrounds. I'm using Gupo paper that I have cut down to size and I'm going to apply first my blending solution. This is one of my favorite methods and then add on top a couple of colors. And every time I'm using a new color, you will be able to see which one it is on your screen. Now I'm going to make sure that I have enough color there and now I'm going to use a straw and blow the color to help it move around. This is one of my favorite methods when I'm working with alcohol inks and uh, just because I have that blending solution on my page it makes it really easy to move everything and blend those colors together. I'm going to leave this to dry and I'm going to move on and create another background. This time I'm using another color combination, but again with the same technique, making sure everything is nicely shaked and mixed up. Then I'm going to apply my blending solution. Again, I'm working on Yupo paper. This is plastic actually, but you can cut it out with your uh, die cutting machine or your scissors. And uh, I'm applying uh, enough color there. And again, with my straw, I'm going to help all those colors to blend together and move around. And you have to excuse my head, but uh, there is no other way to blow over this paper without putting my head in the camera. So now I'm happy with the result. I'm going to put it aside to dry along with the first background and I will move on for another combination. Now this time I'm going with pink and red. These are actually Enchanted and Deception. I always love how they name the colors. And again I'm working on a piece of Yupo, making sure everything is nicely shaked. And I like those color combos today because I'm more into a Valentine's Day uh, themed cards. That's why I play with pinks and purples and reds. And this time instead of using a straw I'm just moving my paper until I'm happy with the outcome. These backgrounds are really shiny, they have that pearlescent look, but it is really hard to show on camera. Once they dry, I will try and catch the light for you and probably you will get a better look on them. Now instead of working just on Yupo, you can now work on uh, alcohol ink cardstock. These are three different types that uh, Ranger has uh, released. This one is called Matte Black. It's really matte. I love the feeling of it. And I will be using it today so you can see how it works with alcohol inks. Now this is another one which is called Brushed Silver. It is shiny and works great with uh, alcohol links as well. And the last one, which is my favorite, is called Silver Sparkle. Now this cardstock is really special because you can use your old alcohol links on top of it and you will get a beautiful shine. So if you don't want to invest on the new pearls, just get a pack of uh, the Silver Sparkle alcohol ink cardstock and I will be demonstrating on it today. You will see how beautiful it looks. Here is the Silver Sparkle cardstock and I'm going to apply my ink using felt. I have a bunch of them from the old days. They are now available in circles, I believe, for the new uh, blending tools. And now instead of using uh, the new pearls, I'm going to use the alcohol inks from the previous releases. So these are the old regular alcohol inks without any pearlescent mica inside. I'm going for an ombre looking background, so I'm just moving my blending tool side to side on my cardstock. It's really easy to blend the colors on top of this cardstock and at the same time you get this amazing shine. You can use your pearls on top of them, but you really don't have to. You can just use your old alcohol inks. Now I'm going to add one more layer at the top. 
and I'm good to go. I will leave this to dry and I will come back to it later on when I'm going to create a card. Now I'm going to show you how the new pearl inks work on top of uh, the new black matte cardstock. It's really amazing. I love how they sit on top of black. I'm just going to add a few splashes there. And remember, this is cardstock, it's not Hupo, but you can still apply your blending solution on top to help those colors blend together. I have zoomed in for you and probably you can see all that paralyzed mica moving around. It's just gorgeous in real life. Remember, it's not going to stay as vibrant as it is at the moment. As it dries, it gets paler, but you can add on top a second layer, which is something that I did, to make it more vibrant. Now I'm applying my blending solution with the felt on top of my matte cardstock, just to see the results, but you will see that it doesn't make a big difference there. I'm applying two new colors again with pearls, and I'll just move them around. Again, a beautiful result, and it is really easy to move the card around to blend the colors. And remember, this is not Yupo, it's uh, just cardstock, which uh, really blows my mind. Now, here are all the backgrounds that I created. They are nice and dry at the moment. Now, one of my favorite techniques when I work with alcohol ink over Yupo is to use the foiling technique, where uh, when the ink is uh, dry, but it's still sticky at the touch, the foil sticks there and it gives uh, beautiful results. So here I'm doing this technique, but it doesn't work for me. Probably I left the backgrounds to dry completely before I remember to do the technique on top of them. And maybe that's the reason. Or maybe it is because there are, they have that uh, pearlescent uh, mica on top of them. I don't know. I have to test them out again and see. Now here on the red panel, the, the ink is not dry at all, it's completely wet and uh, instead of uh, being able to stick the foil on top, I just remove ink from the panel. But I really like the effect and I am going to embrace it and you will see that I'm going to actually use this part of the paper on my final card. Now, since I cannot do the foiling technique that I absolutely want to do, I decided to use uh, one of the glue pens by Decofoil. This uh, has uh, a nib, but it comes with an extra nib in the package. I'm just going to draw over my panels a few lines and then uh, the foil is going to be able to stick on top of it. So I did that for all the three panels that I created using Yupo. And um, it is again really hard for you to see uh, the results, but trust me, it's there. It has a lovely detail of foiling in different areas. Now I'm going to quickly turn them into cards. You can uh, cut out the Yupo with your dies, and that's exactly what I did with the red panel there. I cut out a big heart, and I'm also going to cut out smaller ones. I'm using up most of the scraps that I have there. And I'm also going to cut out bits and pieces from the Valentine's uh, side order. This is a C6 die that is designed to fit inside the sidekick, but you can also use it with your regular big shot. So I cut out an envelope using pattern paper and now I'm just inking up the edges. I'm going to put the envelope together, which is going to give a lovely 3D effect look. I'm adding tape adhesive at the center and now I'm going to fold the flaps. And I have my little envelope ready. I also have cut out from the same uh, uh, inked background a little tiny heart. And my envelope is ready. All I need to do is to put everything together now on top of my card. So here I have a pattern paper that I have inked up with Distress Oxide ink. That's vintage photo all around. And I stick that on top of a brown panel that's four and a quarter by five and a half. So I end up having a little brown border all around. Now I can stick my heart on top and I like to stick it offset. I'm going to uh, cut off the excess. And then I'm going to embellish my card by sticking on top all the little bits and pieces that I have uh, cut out, the hearts and the little envelope. And also I cut out the word love which I'm going to stick on top of my card as well. And here are some close-up photos on the first card for today. 
Now I'm going to move on to the black panels that I have created. These look gorgeous as they are. You can use them as uh, a complete background and just stick on top a die cut word. But I'm going to make a more complicated card. So I used the Faki Floras and I cut out flowers and leaves. I also embossed a panel there. This is just craft cardstock. And uh, I'm going to make a little flower arrangement for my card. Now for the sentiment I'm going to die cut the word celebrate on this uh, thin strip of black cardstock. The die set that I used for that is called uh, Sentiment Words and it's by C6. It's one of my favorites and I will be using it on the next card as well. So all I did was to stick a, a gold uh, cardstock at the back so that you can uh, see the letters better. They are nice and shiny now. I'm going to stick that down by using a foam tape at the back so I do have a little bit of dimension there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my flower arrangements. Some of these bits and pieces I'm going to stick them down with glue so they're going to lay flat. For others I'm going to use some foam squares at the back just to add some dimension on my flower bouquet. Now the flowers and the leaves are really shiny, they are gorgeous in real life. Hopefully you can see them here as I try to catch the light and here are some close-up photos. Now here is the background that I created with my regular rings, alcohol inks, on top of a silver sparkle cardstock. Now since this was quite long and I still wanted to keep that ombre effect, I had to cut off a part from the middle. But I'm going to put those pieces together. And don't worry about the seam, I'm going to cover it up completely later on with my sentiment. Now when you are working with complete backgrounds like I'm doing here, a great way is to stick on top solid cutouts in black or in white uh, like uh, this. For my cutouts I used the Sizzix wildflowers and uh, there are a bunch of those wildflowers in that die set. I just went with three of them in different sizes and uh, variations and I'm going to completely cover up that seam on the background with my sentiment. So I went with thank you and I do have bits and pieces from this background. I don't throw anything away. And I'm going to stick one of those uh, uh, strips at the back of my sentiment to help it pop against the background. Now I'm going with a darker one. And I'm going to stick that on top of my panel. And I used some uh, foam tape at the back so I do have some dimension. Now this is just gorgeous. It's so shiny that you don't really need to do anything else. A really simple design but really gorgeous. Now I have this uh, background that I did lots of foiling on top of it and I'm going to turn it into a couple of cards here. So I'm going to cut out the word love. I'm just using my tea ruler there just to make sure that everything is nice and straight. I'm going to run it through my big shot and I get both the negative and the positive ones. So I will make a card using both of those uh, pieces. For uh, the first card I'm going to um, place the panel on top of a white cardstock and uh, you can turn it easily into a shaker card. However, I'm just going to make a window card for today. I used foam tape at the back to have some dimension. And to complete my card I'm going to stamp one more sentiment. I have this uh, stamp set by My Favorite Things which is packed with uh, sentiments perfect for love cards. So here is the card, really quick and simple to make but looks stunning. And I'm going to show you quickly what I did with the letters from the previous card. I just stuck them in a square piece. Uh, this is a 4x4 so it's perfect as a panel on top of a 4x4 square card. Now, uh, with the last panel that I have, I have cut out this uh, window. It has uh, six hearts and uh, I used the Simon Says Stamp die to do that. Again, you can, do, uh, you can turn this into a shaker card easily. I finished off my card by stamping Sending Some Love on a thin strip of uh, black cardstock. And uh, my card is ready and it looks really pretty with that pearlescent background that you are able to look at through those hearts. 
And here are some close-up photos on the last card that I made for today. And let's take a quick look on all the six cards that I created while I was playing with my alcohol pearl inks. I hope I have inspired you today to turn those uh, backgrounds that you probably have laying around into beautiful cards. Don't forget that, as always, you will find a full list of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area, as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for joining me today and have a lovely day!